Oh, it's got all my six blades. I've got a little bit of a stage run glue in, so I'm just trying to chill and making the most of the time whilst I'm out here. I suddenly thought of a little job I've been wanting to do for a few months. Now it's on my Condor Varan I have from Funky. The one that you put. Great knife, really light, and for an 8 9 inch blade, bloody handy. Right, um, steel's good, but what let the blade down was the sheath. Not the quality of it, not the lever on it, it was so loose that it used to keep falling out. So, if you have a look at it now, it's a retaining sheath. Now, all I've done. is there, so there's four little dots there, I put four stitches in just to close that up a little bit more because it would literally fall out so what I did I'll just show you because somebody else might have the same thing on their Varan or Hudson Bay because the sheaves are they're knocked out pretty quick even though it's thick leather it's it can be quite loose so I would have it on the bench like that bit of light on the subject. Um, also you put it in and out and you work out how much you want to bring it in. Allow the lever to create a bit of a V in order to protect the stitching as the blade goes in. So you don't want the stitching too far towards the blade. And then when you've worked out where it's going to go, okay he's got, I'm going to pinch the two there, so one, two, three, four stitches are going to go there. What I did was I chose the first stitch with an awl. Now this is just a screwdriver, one of those cheap screwdrivers I guess, and those crappy little sets. I just ground it to a point and I just punched one. And the reason you punch one is because the regularity of the stitching is far more easy to gauge if you've got a stitching wheel like this. If not, make sure it's square and give yourself five mil between it and you can measure it on a ruler, okay. So about five mil between each one. If you got a stitching wheel, from that first hole that you made in the corner, you're just going to run the wheel there to there and keep moving it around. So you've got a nice regular set of four holes in that corner, which will bring that little bit there just that little bit closer together, so your blade doesn't get falling out every time you tip the sheath up. Once you've worked out that you're going to stitch it in your four holes or maybe six, you maybe want to come down a bit further. Once you've used that, you use a groover. Now you don't need to use a groover, you could use a screwdriver uh, that you sharpen to sort of a chisel point. And what you want to do is a scrap piece of leather what this does is between the four holes it just removes a little bit of lever just takes a little bit out that little grey bit so you create yeah, a groove and that's just a bit of a dent so the stitching instead of being high and you can catch it and wear it out and ruin it it sits down low and then when you run the wheel up and down it when you run the wheel up and down it you get a nice recessed trench and then your targets are where the holes are on the drill quite often I'll get the awl and just start them off again but my drill so accurate now with a 2 mil in it all the time I just drill through the centre where the holes are which will be the spikes on the wheel now you've got four holes in there you just marry up the other side again do the wheel the other side because you want the stitching recessed on the back as well if you haven't got a groover I found something that's a bit expensive but you can actually get the same thing going for you got to get your 
hydrocarbon straight edge your bovine skin product and a double clad graphite rod a bit hard to get hold of these but generally speaking five year olds usually have them okay and you make your trench it's quite an advanced sort of step there's your thing five mil and you you got the same thing going for you there's my trench there's my ruler there's my 5mm give yourself a start and then every 5mm Where I'm going, okay. So it's a pencil groove. Okay, so now you've spaced the stitches out, you just literally pass two needles through. Now, the needles that I'm using are quite big, heavy duty. Let's get the light down slightly. My little joystick at the back heavy duty okay and I do a lock stitch on it now a lock stitch isn't as complicated as you might think how can I demonstrate okay you pass that through the eye of a needle, something like a needle. You pass that through the eye of your needle, and then you put the needle between the threads there, so that would go here, and then pass it up, and then pull it in a knot, so you end up with a lock stitch. So basically, there's your thread open it out so you can see a loop in there you pass the needle through it you pull the bunch down over the top and you create a lock stitch now that stops the needle from slipping off the end of the thread when you're pulling it tight too high tech and then all you're doing then is it between your legs pass them both through and then one that way one back for the same one pull tight and keep looping round you want to end up eventually when you've gone through around a couple of times pass it from the front to the back of the sheath so you end up with both threads and needles on the back cut them off flush cigarette lighter a bit like your paracord finish them off quick get your stitching well whilst it's molten just, just run over the top and squash the heads down might better pick up that there I don't know there you go see the slightly two bigger ones there there's the four stitches and basically you just like the end of paracord you just melt the end over melt the end over so if you can imagine those four stitches weren't there and now I've got that going on without those four stitches there that would be open so much more and you wouldn't get that retention so now this wicked blade that I can use out and about and it's really light I'm more happier using it because the sheath won't let the knife fall out. So, a little bit of a, a mod on a Condor Varan sheath. Scott always explains. 
see you on the next one